I believe that women have a very important role in the Bible, and it was a very interesting, fascinating study for me. You're, I believe it will be a big blessing for you women. You women have an important role in the Bible. It should not be neglected or ignored. In this day and age that we live in, Satan, he wants to switch the roles of men and women. So what he wants to do is for the women to take the role of a man and the men to take the role of the women. But you got to understand this. God, he's a divider. He rightly divides things. Why? Because he knows what's best for the particular person in that gender, in that situation, in that class, in the, uh, etc. So the Lord does it for a reason, you understand. So you got to divide it. You got to realize women have their role and men have their role. So it's very important. So the world gives this brainwashed idea that we're all equal. But no, the Lord doesn't want that. He doesn't want you to think that way. He wants you women, your role undoubtedly overall is this. There's a very important role in this. But the world, what they want to do is that Satan and the world, they want to brainwash you into thinking that this is something despicable. This is something low life. That's why they would put Hollywood movie clips and teachers bringing up these kind of examples of women, how they uh, were despised by men and they were run down, et cetera, and et cetera. Yeah. But uh, it's funny. They, don't, they only show you lost people in that case or exceptional cases. They don't show you good, godly Christian women and men. They don't show you their life stories, how those women were treated. And it's not actually, it's something very prized and valuable if you look at women of God throughout history, their role in this. It's a valuable asset the Lord did not give to men. He gave it only to you women for a reason. It's very important. So let's look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. Genesis 1, 27. Now, the Lord, He created both man and woman. Now, I don't know if people actually looked at the verse, but there were people who objected that women are not made in the image of God. Now, I taught you that in the last video. Who's the one made in the image of God? It's man. It's not women. Women, their image is from the man. And there were people online who disagreed, even though I showed them the verse on that. So I don't know if they were actually looking the verse. I told you over and over again, don't believe a word that I'm saying. Amen. You have to look at the verse. Otherwise, I could be blindly saying something that's not there, or I could be so saying something truthful, but you're not looking at it. Yep. So look at Genesis 1, verse 27. This is their proof text. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So this is supposedly their proof text that women are made in the image of God. Now the simple answer is you just look at the verse and read it. Did it say that? Did it say women is in the image of God or is it man if you're reading it? About women, he said he created her. He never said woman is made in God's image. So look at the verse. So God created man. But did it stop there? No, in his own image. In the image of God created he him. He repeated again for man. But now look at the next part. Male and female created he them. Female, he did not create female in his own image. It just says he created female. Do you know why? Because in Genesis 1.27, this did not... People are assuming this, that God created Adam and Eve at the same time. That's what they're thinking. So when they're, what they're assuming is that when God created man in his own image, at the same time, he did the same thing with Eve. That's not true. Notice he said man twice because it's going in a chronological order here. There's a time gap in that semicolon. How did he create Eve? Truly from man's image. Look at Genesis 2. See, it's a separate time period Eve was created. Look at Genesis 2. And look at verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. 
and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. See that? From man he created woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. See that? So this is very important to understand. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11 is definite proof. We're not going to turn there because I showed you in the previous video. Now, I don't know what they were doing. They did not read that verse. Remember, what did 1 Corinthians 11 say? Man is in the image of Christ, right? In the image of God. But it said woman is what? The image and glory of man, right? You saw that 1 Corinthians 11. But people, I guess they weren't reading it. So I showed that in the last video, so I'm not going to repeat it again. Now, this is important to understand. Why is it important to say woman is in the image of man? Now, there's this one person that I thought was a brilliant comment I never thought of before. Uh, she said it this way, what a, beautiful, what a beautiful thing that man is in the image of the creator and woman is the image of the creation. That was a really uh, great statement, actually, that I liked. Because the thing is this, the reason why it's important to say the woman is the image of man is because that's the role right here, is that you make up the man right here. Because you make up the man, you got to realize this, when these two become one, when the woman becomes the supporter of the man, it becomes a powerful powerhouse that even the devil will have a very hard time attacking, you understand. This unity is extremely important with women being supporters. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah 66. If you make them the same, then you d get rid of this distinction here. Here's the distinction which is extremely important. Okay, so listen up. This is really important. You notice woman is not completely from what God created her in his image. Women were created partially from God's image. Why? Because she was created from man. Now, I don't know if you got that part. So let me repeat again. That way you can understand. God created who in his image? Man, right? So man contains God's image, correct? As God's image as man, woman, was she created completely from that or a part of it, such as the fifth rib at Genesis 2, right? It's from a nurturing side of man that's close to the heart. That is extremely important because then it shows the other side of God. Our God is a male, that's his image. But there's a certain side of him that you are focused on women. There's a certain side of God that you are very focused on that you should not put in a doormat. It's a very important role. And as a matter of fact, you and I would not be alive if it wasn't for this one. The nurturing side of God, that's where you retain from, see? That's a part of the image of God you retain from. It's not completely in this, that's man. It's part of man, see that? Part of the image. And that's the nurturing side, the fifth rib. This, these are beautiful verses. I, I get excited about this. Look at Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, 13. You better thank God he has a very nurturing side. So he likens his actions, his nurturing side, to what women do. Look at Isaiah 66, verse 13. As one <clears throat> whom his mother comforteth, so will I what? Comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. That's why the Holy Spirit is known as what? The Comforter. Aren't you glad that he's not the... He's not the a discipliner, the rebuker, in this case right here, he's a comforter. Aren't you glad your God's a God of comfort? Not like the Old Testament where he was strict in his holiness and he stoned people to death. It's a God of comforter right here. So here's one thing that you share from God. It's his comforting side. Now my question to you women is this. Do you use this gift God has given to you for his glory? Or do you keep... Uh, looking at some other role, and you don't take the gift that God created you with. Now look at another one. Look at Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Not only the comforting side, but it's love as well. Love. Look at Matthew 23, <coughs> verse 37. 
Matthew 23, verse 37. If God was all holiness, you and I would be out of the planet forever without any existence whatsoever. If it wasn't for this one, <clears throat> then Jesus Christ would not have went on the cross of Calvary and we would not be saved in Jesus Christ. This is an important thing that the Lord has blessed you women with. Look at Matthew chapter 23 and verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. God offers salvation to all of mankind. Here's my love at the cross of Calvary, but mankind rejects it, right? But that is a wonderful gift, and the thing, the aspect that the Lord has blessed you women with that you should take advantage of, because this is from God's side. Don't you think that's something that you shouldn't despise? Something that's from God's attributes that he has given you women with, that's something you should take full advantage of. Now let's look at another one. Look at Psalms 18. I love this verse, Psalms 18. Psalms chapter 18. Man, this is a beautiful thing you understand, something to rejoice and be thankful for, because if it wasn't for these attributes of God, you and I would not be alive today. You and I would not have the motivation to keep serving Him. That's right. Look at Psalms chapter 18, verse 35. This is great, all right? Aren't you glad God was very patient with you, no matter how stubborn and arrogant you were? And that's how He made you great eventually? Look at Psalms 18, verse 35. Man, I love this verse. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. And thy right hand hath holden me up. And thy what? Gentleness hath made me what? Great. Now compare that with 1 Thessalonians 2. 1 Thessalonians 2. 1 Thessalonians 2. That's also an attribute God demands of apostles and pastors. Didn't you know that? There is some gift and attribute you women major in that pastors and apostles are supposed to do in raising a church. And that's gentleness. That's gentleness. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 6. It's very interesting how I notice that different pastors, they soften up a lot. They become more gentle in an understanding of people when they have married wives, when they have good missionary or pastor's wives. I notice that quite often. You know, that's why you're a very important aspect. You're a very important asset. You're a very important role. You're a very important person that the Lord has blessed you with that can create that powerhouse for men in the ministry, and not only that, for ministering to the body of Christ. Let's also look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 6. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as who? The apostles of Christ. But rather what? But we were gentle among you, even as, notice, a woman, even as a nurse, cherisheth her children. Gentleness hath made me great. That's God's attribute. And that's something you women have that pastors actually can learn from. How about that? This is something the Lord has blessed you with. Here's another one. Let's look at Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. There is something in the role of a mother, actually, is that in the role of a mother, it's very hard, no matter how messed up your son or your daughter is, or how wicked they are, it's very hard for a mother to forget that child. Because that child was born from her. It's a part of her, close to her heart. It's very hard for them. And that's a beautiful thing the Lord has for us, is that instead of forgetting and forsaking us and letting us die and burn in hell for all eternity, there was that aspect in Him that would look beyond our faults, overlook our faults, 
<laughs> and still use us for his glory. And can't, man, isn't that something to shout and be happy about? Even when you're saved, you slipped up many times and the Lord could have dismissed you any moment. But he overlooks these things and he keeps using you. Man, what a blessing. Now look at Isaiah 49 and verse 15. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her on the son of her womb it's like a rhetorical question see it shows that no women can never do that yea they may forget yet what i will not forget thee now this is a blessing is that god's care and nourishment on the children is even stronger than women so God gives a rhetorical question at first that women don't forget. And then later on, it is possible women could forget, but God, he will never forget after that. So it shows that his care is even stronger. So this is such a blessing, is compassion right here. Compassion. The most unthinkable, that's why the most unthinkable thing that the world will see as despicable is a woman who kills her own baby and child. Because it's a rhetorical thing. There's no way a mother and a woman would do that. That's something that you're blessed with a gift and something that's innate in you. But there are some women that can do that. That's why what does Satan want you to do? That's why it's a, he wants you to do this. See that? This is Satan. He wants to ruin the role. And this is what these uh, elites are doing in our world to promote this. This is what the liberal schools are doing to promote this. What do, they, what do they want? They want you to become more masculine. Mm -hmm. See, they want you to forget this feminine side that the Lord has blessed you with. They want you to be what? Not just even masculine, but they want you to be what? They want you to be the dominant figure. Rather than what? The supporting figure. So, you know what Satan's best role of today is, what he wants? What he wants today is a perfect example of Satan's world that completely abolishes all this is a liberal feminist activist. That's the perfect role. Why would, he, why would these liberals promote this kind of stuff that's totally contrary to what God wants in a woman? You know why? Because Satan wants to ruin what God has gifted and blessed and created you with. Oh, I don't like this. What? This is inferior? You say, you tell God this is inferior, what's on his side, what's close to his heart. You call this inferior. You call this despicable. This is a blessed thing that was close to the heart of God, you got to understand. Not only that, you got to think about this. This is really amazing and important as the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that who is the day and age that we're living in that God is using? It's the church, right? What age are we living in? The church age, right? This is our time. This is our day and age. Who is the symbol of the church? Is it a man or is it a woman? You know why? She is what? The body? <laughs> she makes up. Remember, the woman is the same in one body with the man, right? At Genesis chapter 2. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You women have a, something very incredible right here. One with the body of Jesus Christ. You make up this one on how God's using at the body of Christ today. Do you know how the body of Christ is supported and marches on? There were a lot of women who supported churches throughout martyrs, where they encouraged their husbands to die for the name of Jesus. Women who helped their husbands to not quit the ministry. Women who took the soul winning positions and the ministerial roles when men have failed. Women have always supported the church throughout history. And not only that, why is it an age of grace you got to understand in this church age? You know why? It took all these attributes. This is New Testament. New Testament, <laughs> New Testament, and New Testament. And how do we fight against our enemies? Yes, sir. Amen. 
Now, this is something I don't think you should put on a doormat, don't you think? You've got an important role right here, a very important role. So there is no doubt, this, that's why this is your main role. Your main role is this one, being a supporter, being a supporter. And as a supporter, isn't this supporting you? Isn't this supporting you? Isn't this supporting you? And isn't this supporting you? And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amen. That's how we lived and survived. And that's why women are extremely important in the ministry. And important to what? The body of Christ. The body of Christ is hurting itself so much in this day and age that we live in. And it's important that we have women who can support it and keep it going together. So you've got to understand that in Ephesians chapter 5, and then I'll do a second teaching on women. So this is really long. There's so much to say about women, you got to understand. There's so much to say. Look at Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Now I'm just going to go through this. I'm just going to skim through this because there's just so much to talk about right here. But notice right here that in verse 27, God talks about the church, right? Verse 28, God talks about men should love their wives as their own body. Why? Verse 29, the man cares about his own flesh, so he should do the same thing with the wife. But notice, the Lord does the same thing with the church. Why? Because the church makes up the body of Christ. Verse 30, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Verse 31, what happens with man and wife? They become one flesh. But God likens that to verse 32, Christ and the church. So that relationship is extremely important where you have to divide. If you insist this as the same, and you know you make the woman as the same image as the man, et cetera, and et cetera. No, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is this. Separate the role of the women in their image that God has given to them and men in the image that God has given to them. You have to make a dividing line. I believe that is extremely important because it shows the side that a lot of people ignore. When you're created at a different image, you would see which roles that you're in that God has blessed you with and created you with. And it is extremely important you take that into your own advantage. You make up the body of Christ. You make up the body of Christ, you understand. And that is extremely important. Now, I'm, this is not to overlook the role of men. Okay, This video is only about women, so I didn't talk about men. Throughout history, the Lord, what he used as leaders and as preachers and to get the job done and to stir up the pot is men. That's how God used them. Without great men of God who would have the stance to say, let's do something about it and take charge, we got gutless men now. See, everyone depending, depending on the government. That's what the world does. See, equating this where we become so dependent, dependent. No, man got to take charge and say, let's do something. You know what I did? I acted like a man and said, let's do something with this feminine Bay Area right here. Yep. Everyone, you know, becoming homosexual and being liberal and men who can't, uh, have the guts to take the stand who are bold for Jesus Christ. Amen. Christians acting in a Christians acting, pastors acting feminine in the tone of their voice and not taking a stand. No wonder the churches fall apart. But here's the thing, that is the role of men and that's not the point of video. So I don't look overlook the importance of men. Without them then we couldn't have a church starting. But you got to realize this, neither can you do well with women. Without women, you can't do well either because you got this one starting something, but where are the supporters? See, you need someone to support and back up. When you got someone taking a stand and then someone pushing that all the way, then you can charge through the gates of hell. That's, that's what you need. See, that's why this unity, this powerhouse is important. No wonder Genesis 6, Satan messed up that unity. The marriage bed is undefiled and holy, the Bible says, but Satan wants to wreck that. That's why he has premarital sex. That's why he has fornication, homosexuality, and all that to ruin that. He ruins, he wants to ruin this thing. 
the hot relationship of husband and wife is important the role of men and women is so important because you need someone to stir up the pot men and then you need the woman to push it along and then keep it going and when the man wants to not take charge anymore and wants to give up and back out thank God for godly women who says no you can't quit on Jesus Christ and keep going pastor so-and-so may reject you but at least I'll support you